In 21 BC, Caesar Augustus made a strategic move on the chessboard that was Roman politics. His gambit was designed to gain him a more favorable position in the loyalties of the legions. His chess piece was his only daughter, Julia Augusti Filia, whom he maneuvered into a marriage to Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, the man who was already well positioned with legions who viewed Agrippa as the equal of Augustus. And in many ways, not only the legions of Rome, but the people of Rome saw Agrippa and Caesar Augustus as equal partners, improving their lives in different but equally important aspects. After decades of civil war had come to an end following the deaths of Marcus Antonius and Cleopatra, Augustus had used his authority to shut down all avenues that might lead to the political polarization blamed for generating Rome's civil wars. Better that Augustus mandate an end of political opposition and ambition within her government than to see Rome's sons and fathers head off to war. For his part, Marcus Agrippa had focused on the city's infrastructure, upgrading Rome's physical environment so that the people might flourish. In the eyes of Rome's citizens, the pursuit of peace and the material improvement in their lives were thanks to the harmonious partnership of Augustus and Agrippa. But all was not peace and harmony for Augustus when, in 23 BC, he came to realize that there were factions within Rome's military whose allegiance was now divided between himself and their beloved Marcus Agrippa. But the legions had reason to feel that it was Augustus who had betrayed them, as they watched him turn his attention toward his nephew Marcellus in his quest for an heir to carry on the family name, given he had no biological son. And though such was the right of any Roman nobleman, for the legions to witness this son of Julius Caesar, himself adopted from an equestrian family, attempting to pass on the military legacy won for him by Agrippa to a patrician Claudian youth, how could they accept a scenario which would allow Rome's military machine to be passed right back into the hands of the Roman elite? Were they to be silent and obedient after sixty years of class struggles and civil wars which began with Gaius Marius? Augustus needed a strategy that would pacify the Roman legions and bring accord. What he had once accomplished by making Marcus Antonius his brother-in-law, he now repeated by making Marcus Agrippa his son-in-law. However, Augustus soon encountered unexpected consequences from his decision. While Rome's legions were placated, and even her senate, which had acquired a great deal of respect for the general who had refused every triumph offered to him, Augustus' had own sister, Octavia, was not thrilled to see Marcus Gipsanius Agrippa elevated to the second highest position in the land. Augustus had caused familial discord by disrupting her existing alliances. In order to marry Julia, Agrippa was forced to divorce Marcella, the daughter of Octavia, thus alienating Agrippa from her. Octavia fought back by remarrying her daughter to her stepson Eulus, the son of the late Marcus Antonius. Augustus then looked on as his sister proceeded to honor the betrothal of her daughter Antonia to Enobarbus, which had been arranged by her late husband Marcus Antonius, also overseeing the marriage of her second daughter named Marcella to the stepson of her late husband. Augusta's sister had surrounded herself with Antonian allies, even so far as fostering the three orphan children of Antonius and Cleopatra. Closer to home, Augustus' own wife, Livia Drusilla, formally attached herself to Marcus Agrippa by finalizing the marriage of her son Tiberius to Agrippa's daughter Vipsania. Meanwhile, in the household of Agrippa, his daughter Julia appeared to be playing a role in organizing the betrothals of Agrippa's daughters by Marcella, with one daughter going to Julia's nephew, and the other going to the brother-in-law of her cousin. By the time his daughter gave birth to the second son, Lucius Vipsanius Agrippa, Caesar Augustus stood squarely in the middle of the Antonian and the Vipsanian clans within the family. By giving birth to not one, but two heirs to whom Rome's military legacy might pass, Julia, the granddaughter of the divine Julius Caesar, had elevated the status of her husband, Agrippa, above even that of her father Augustus, who still had no son of his own. But what Augustus did have that Agrippa did not was the Praetorian Guard. 
When at the age of 19, a young Augustus had sailed to Italy upon learning the news of his uncle's murder and of his posthumous adoption as his heir, he had acquired Julius Caesar's legions stationed at Brundisium. These legions, who were at that time awaiting deployment to Parthia, had marched to Rome alongside the new Caesar. Because of the imminent threat to the young heir's life from his uncle's assassins and from Marcus Antonius, the Senate did not strip the new Caesar of this small but illegal army, asserting that the new son of Caesar had every right to protect himself with what was known as a Praetorian cohort. By 27 BC, a full sixteen years after Caesar's murder, the Praetorian Guard was given legal standing to serve, only Caesar Augustus. The formation of the official Praetorian Guard in 27 BC saw the number of Augustus's personal protectors expanded to nine cohorts. A cohort contained approximately 500 men, and ten cohorts represented a full legion. Although Caesar Augustus capped the Praetorian Guard at nine cohorts, this elite squadron of almost 5,000 men was recruited from the best and most fearless soldiers within the ranks of the frontier legions. Not only did this exclusive division of the military receive the right to live within the vicinity of Rome, where they might put down roots, but they were paid three times what the average soldier on the frontiers was paid. Augustus rotated these nine cohorts, keeping only three on active duty at any given time, with the remaining six cohorts acting as reserve units on standby for times of crisis. Because of higher pay and more favorable work and living conditions, the Praetorian Guard was separated from the larger political agenda that engulfed Rome's primary legions. Not only did the Praetorian Guard protect the person of Augustus Caesar and his family, but they were also committed to the city's upkeep in various civic capacities. By 23 BC, permanent barracks to house the Praetorian Guard were built around the perimeter of the city. As long as they acted as police officers, firefighters, and general maintenance crews, the Roman people gradually became accustomed to the presence of these armed soldiers within their city. However, Rome was not yet comfortable having merely a full legion permanently housed within the city boundary. And so, with 4,500 armed and highly skilled legionaries dedicated to his personal safety, Caesar Augustus was able to make several decisions during the period between 23 and 17 BC, which helped to reduce the personal dangers associated with any family opposition he might face. But because diplomacy is more genteel than military might, Augustus first turned to King Juba II of Numidia. For his support of Augustus during the Cantabrian Wars in Hispania, the man who, as a child, had been spared by Julius Caesar during his quadruple triumph of 46 BC, was given a Ptolemaic bride, Cleopatra Selene, the daughter of Antonius and Cleopatra. Selene's brothers, however, disappear from the historical records at this time. Augustus then turned his attention to the family of Agrippa, presenting it as a great honor bestowed upon Agrippa and Julia. He formally adopted both of their sons, Gaius and Lucius, officially changing their names from Vipsanius Agrippa to Caesar. Augustus likely made the decision to adopt both of his grandsons, rather than leaving one son to bear the name of Agrippa, as a means of preventing a repeat of divided loyalties with the legions. Now, the heirs to Rome's mighty legions were unified under the name of Caesar, whether or not Agrippa agreed with the adoption of both his sons is unclear, but Agrippa could do little to object in the face of almost 5,000 elite guards who followed the orders of one man alone, Caesar Augustus. By 14 BC, Marcus Agrippa and his wife Julia had departed Rome. Augustus later received word that, while in Athens, Julia had given birth to her fourth child, another girl, which Agrippa named Vipsania Julia. With the birth of yet another granddaughter, Augustus' adopted heirs remained without a challenger. And so, as it was in the days of Lucius Cornelius Sulla and Gaius Marius, and again in the days of Julius Caesar and Pompeius Magnus, and yet again in the days of Caesar D.V. Filius and Marcus Antonius, the stage exhibited an all-too-familiar scene. 
Caesar Augustus and the might of his Praetorian Guard held Rome, while Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa and his wife were situated, once again, in the east.